very good morning to all the respected parents and students my name is swati kamesetti and on the behalf of symbiosis school of photography i would like you uh, i would like to welcome uh, all of you to the induction program batch 2023 of uh, a2 we have a first guest uh, speaker for the day is ashish chandatreya i think that's how we pronounce the last name thank you yeah, yeah. yeah. he is that kid who has always been crazy about camera he is that kid uh, was that kid who always had the camera on him uh, going around taking pictures all the time he began freelancing as a photographer at a very young age which probably taught him a lot of things way before he started his career with a photography he acquired a diploma in photography from fx school india he uh, his work has garnered a massive following on instagram which also led to the birth of the youtube channel In 2019 he moved to New York to work to do a conservatory program on photography from the New York Film Academy. Uh his love for short B uh, roll roll clips and time lapses gave a major boost to his YouTube channel and with 3 months in and uh, in 3 months into it a few videos in he received his silver play button. Vlogging was his effort as documenting his journey as a foreign student in the United States of America. He hoped it would help many more aspiring students like him his ability to adapt to different environments growth consistently innovate consistently helped in innovating art and willingness to learn uh, brought him multiple collaborations with huge brands like samsung india and apollo tires his photographs depicting the impact of covid-19 on new york city were published in national geographic travel these obsessions are what kept him motivated and are the sources of his innovations ashish branched out and photographed all kinds of subjects uh, but now travel and automotive uh, auto, uh, automobile photography remain the closest to his heart and that's what he thinks is best at over to you sir so hello everyone good morning uh, and thank you for the lovely introduction uh, i am ashish chandra tyar and uh, as you just heard i'm a photographer and youtuber and i'm really honored to be present here before all of you uh, and i would like to share a little bit about my journey with photography so far so i know usually uh, you know talks at induction go really long then you might think that it can get boring so i'll try to keep mine a little short so that you know you just if stay fresh throughout the day and don't sleep right uh, in the morning so like before actually starting and going ahead with my talk so there's one question uh, that i have for all of you and that is what according to you is one of the most important things uh that as a photographer that you must have uh, to be successful and uh, now some of you may think that a good camera is a must or some of you may think that good knowledge of lighting is must or some may think that uh, how many followers you have on instagram is must but in my opinion one of the most important qualities uh, you must have as a photographer is curiosity as a photographer you will always stand out by having a curious mind and looking at things with a different perspective and uh, before getting deep into that topic i'll just share with you my journey so far so when i was a kid maybe around 6 or 7 years old uh, i used to visit uh, one of my grandfathers so he was like my grandmother's brother and he used to stay in nashik uh, so he was a self taught photographer and that too at a time when photography meant dealing with a lot of chemistry and having patience uh, yes he was a film photographer and unlike this digital age of photography things were pretty pretty complicated back then uh so my grandfather had a dark room where he used to develop his photograph and every time i went to his place he used to take me to the dark room and show me how he developed film and then he and uh, later on he also let me handle some of his cameras and uh, this is where it all started basically so moving on when i grew up i was uh, like uh, swati mentioned in the introduction so i was always that kid who had a camera on him 24/7 especially uh during family outings and i used to run out most number of uh, you know film rolls because at that time we still used to have a basic film roll camera and uh i used to you know like use up most most number of rolls uh, as compared to anyone else in the family and then later on i was scolded because uh everyone used to like what is this you are just like out of the five rolls that he used three rolls are just of landscape and flowers and cars and uh, you know uh, you don't take pictures of us and uh, this was because you know like and this scolding was because like every photograph that you took back then costed you certain amount of money because you had only 36 photos in the roll and then you also had to get them developed and that to take time so in case you miss a, a, a wrong moment or something like that then you're screwed so nevertheless my father was always supportive and he always used to let me 
you know, use as many roles as I wanted. And he was like, it's okay. It runs in the family, maybe. Go ahead, follow, follow the passion. Uh, and then obviously, you know, digital SLRs came out and my best friend had one. So I used to always practice photography on his camera because like for that time for my family, buying a DSLR uh, seemed pretty expensive, you know, like because there were other expenses also. I always wanted a new cycle every two years. So uh, until one day, you know, when I was in my third grade of my BBA, so like after I finished my college, I did my BBA. Uh, my grandfather actually uh, bought me a Canon 60D and that was my first ever DSLR. And by that time, I developed a taste for travel and automotive photography. And I used to go on a lot of bike rides at that time. So I used to, like, you know, everywhere I stop, I used to take out my camera. I used to shoot. I used to shoot my bike. I used to have my bike as my subject and then shoot. And then shoot the landscape as well. So I used to, like, shoot at all the places. And then one day, I uh, met my friend, Nikhil, who is uh, one of India's most popular YouTubers. And we went on a couple of rides together. And then I started working as his personal photographer. And during this time, uh, I experimented with fashion and lifestyle photography. So earlier it was travel and automotive. Then I experimented with fashion and lifestyle photography. And, you know, during this time, I learned a lot about the same. So I was having a good time overall. But then later on to also gain experience of other cultures and have a better understanding of art. I uh, moved to New York last year. And I must say, I've learned a lot about photography as an art uh, that is out of the commercial, uh, out of the realm of commercial photography. And, you know, to sum it up, it has never, it has been a never, never ending experience. Uh, because like in, in photography, I've learned that every day, uh, like if you go out shoot, shooting every day, you learn something new, maybe some new shooting technique or some editing technique or some different perspectives. So there's always something you can learn. And, uh, and thus, you know, like there's one message I would like to give you all is that like never, never stop exploring. A very important photographer, uh, you will probably study about him uh, in one of your courses, Henry Cartier-Bresson, once said that your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. And when you begin your journey with photography, you often uh, don't know what style of photography suits you the best. Thus, it is, a bet uh, it is better to try your hand and gain experience of different styles of photography and to work on your own vision and style. Uh, to tell you a little story, after moving to New York in the first week, I visited a photo exhibition called Photoville uh, that was in Brooklyn, uh, right under the Brooklyn Bridge. And the USP of this photo exhibition was that all the photos were displayed in cargo containers. So, you know, like the big containers that are put on the top of trucks, so you see them in, them in ships. So they put them in one open place on the top of each other. And then each container has its own uh, separate exhibition. So I was really, very excited because my course was just going to start. And then I wanted to... Uh, learn and study as much photography as I could even before the course started. So I just went to that exhibition. Obviously, it was free and, you know, you could explore and Leica was one of the sponsors. So I just walked in just to see uh, what kind of photographs are there inside and uh, what all is displayed. So I found many of the exhibits were a fine art photography. And at that time, because I had very little knowledge of fine art, uh, I failed to understand uh, why something so simple as in there will be just a photograph of a leaf uh, in a white plain background and, and that will be displayed or it will be just some blotch of ink on a plain paper and that will be displayed. So I was like, why is why are so simple things being displayed on the wall? I mean, what makes them so special that they actually appear on a wall on such a big exhibition? But then gradually, as I learned the history of photography and different genres of photography, I started to understand the concept of fine art photography. And uh, I also visited a lot of museums, a lot of galleries, uh, that are here in New York because like New York is full of all of these uh, art museums and then art galleries and most of these galleries uh, like are open to students and everyone to watch so like I went there and then with the experience uh, that I gained overall I realized uh, the importance of writing an artist statement so as it expresses uh, the feeling of a photographer and helps the viewer to comprehend the photograph better so I suggest you to you know like when you start your journey with photography always get into the into, uh, into the habit of uh, actually writing an artist statement. Uh, and, you know, like, firstly, I would like to congratulate you all for choosing a field of study that is not mainstream. Uh, you know, like, everyone is, like, studying either, like, one of the, one of the STEM streams is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So, you know, like, you guys are the real tough ones who are actually, you know, like, coming out of the mainstream uh, career paths and you know like choosing something that is actually driven out of your passion but trust me like what I feel what I've experienced staying here uh, learning photography uh, uh, like for, for all the time that I have 
is that the efforts that you put in here are equal or sometimes even more than any other stream of study. Because, like for example, uh, I was doing a one-year course in New York, and some of my friends uh, are doing masters in some, like you know, like engine, some uh, engineering or management course or some kind of pharmacy course. So I was actually more busy doing my assignments than they were, and uh, like I had classes every day, but they were like three twice or thrice, uh, like two or three days a week. So like uh, photography, even though it seems easy to the outside world, if you really have to be uh, very uh serious about it it is equally or sometimes even more difficult uh than you know what it looks so uh like congratulations on choosing something that you actually love doing so like i said earlier to be a successful photographer you need to stand out and you have to have your own individual style and while you're developing this style it is important to receive critique about your work and then work on it and when i say, and when i say critique it doesn't necessarily come from the people who always appreciate your work you know like here they always say if, if uh, someone critiques someone's work and then if someone gets too offended then they just say that if you want to hear a compliment about your photograph ask your mother because she loves you and she'll always say good things about your art but then when you ask a mentor or a professor or even some of your colleagues who actually understand uh, a little bit about photography they always give you an honest opinion on where you can improve and get better with your art Now always remember to take criticism constructively because it actually helps you better yourself uh, and then improvise in one way or the other. Obviously, you can uh, keep your style in mind, uh, not just listen to each and every uh, thing that others say. But then uh, most of the times, it is very helpful. Uh, it is one of the things that I always enjoyed in my classes here at Naipa. That uh, after every assignment, we used to display our photos on the wall, and then everyone, each and every one, was asked to say something about that photograph. what they feel and then i was uh, asked to explain the photograph uh, in case you know it has some context to it or something like that and uh, that is how we actually grow ourselves like to with discussing uh, our art especially with our professors and our colleagues and uh, one last thing i mean i don't think i'm planning to go any like longer i i would like to ask you guys to do before you know like ending my talk is to always maintain an artist journal uh, i like to research and read about photographers who inspired me and influenced my art i make sure that every week i make a collection of photographs so what i do is firstly i just scroll through instagram to uh, you know i look at people whom i follow on instagram uh, i i take some photographs on pinterest i make a collection of it and uh, at the end of every week i print out those photos uh, when i was in school i just used to uh, print it out from my school uh, if, if you have a printer at home you can do that it's very like, very basic so i print out my photos and then i maintain a artist journal when i paste those photos with name of the photographer and then if there's something really in, uh, inspiring about that art and uh, i make sure that i do this every week and um, you know make collection of photos of artworks uh, and take print out and uh, and do all of those things so what this like how this helps is that it helps me develop and work towards my individual style of photography So if I love travel and automotive photography, if you look at my artist journal, you'll always find people like Ansel Adams, and then uh, you know like people of the group of sixty four, which I think you'll uh, learn uh, coming up soon. So uh, you'll find all of the people who I actually uh, am inspired by. Uh, I take inspiration from, and then uh, you know like I also uh, like uh, taking inspiration from like. Uh, documentary photographers so you know like i have a few photos of people like dotia lanz so uh, you know if you actually see and you know there are a lot of other wow photographers so uh, because i used to study them a lot it actually got into my mind that i should go out and shoot covid 19 uh, and then you know uh, like make a documentary out of it like how new york city looks i will talk about that a little later so uh, always remember uh, that you have to maintain an artist journal and then go, go back and look at it uh, every once in a while so that you can you know understand how you want your uh, individual style to be and make sure that it doesn't have only photographers see as an artist you can get inspired by anything not just photographs i mean there are so many art pieces especially paintings there is so much to learn from paintings especially light and you know like especially uh, the uh, the paintings of the uh, like uh, renaissance era and then you know there are lot of different eras and uh, i would like suggest you to go and look up and then like every painting has such beautiful lighting if if you like if you know rembrandt so 
if you go and look at uh, his paintings you'll get to learn so much so much from him that uh, will actually inspire you to uh, you know get better with your photography because uh, like light is one thing which is one of the most important aspects uh, to make your photography better so uh, also always remember to be an opportunist and uh, make most of any assignment that comes your way so this is something that i did with my new york story like i just said that i was like reading a lot about war photographers and how uh, people actually went out and photographed during the difficult times and uh, you know like they actually uh, uh, stood out from uh, the other people so like th- that's why uh, when like the uh, virus hit new york and then all the streets were empty so uh, i actually went out with my camera shot uh the street like shot times square which is completely empty which is absolutely rare site shot many other places of new york which are usually filled with people but then uh, it, it like it was like by and completely empty you couldn't see anyone no tourists so and then i approached uh, national geographic traveler india and then they actually liked my photos and they decided to publish it so uh yeah just be an opportunist don't risk your life i'm not telling you to like right now go outside and then like shoot whatever you can no that's not the point but then if any similar opportunity comes your way uh and you know that you can be safe but still document or you know like uh, it just uh, it doesn't have to be documentary style you know if you have a friend of yours who's modeling and then one day uh, he or she needs a photo shoot done and then she's asking you like hey i'm just uh looking forward and uh, would you like to help me out go ahead shoot collaborate you know like in the beginning stage collaborations and then uh you know working with other people to get your portfolio done it really really helps a lot uh and you know uh, obviously don't work too much for free because you know like photographers also have bills to pay but then in the, in the in the beginning phase Uh, it's really nice to actually try out all the fields because you know like i said earlier i tried travel photography i tried uh, automotive photography i shot for a, a automotive magazine also uh, uh, it was a jaguar f type shoot for a, uh, for a magazine called rashtin so i just like and that too it wasn't necessarily for the magazine uh, the edit the uh, editor and photographer of the magazine lived in my building and then he was a good friend of mine so i was like hey uh, you guys are shooting so uh do you mind if i join you and i shot with them because i was so passionate about cars at that time and i still am so they allowed me to accompany them on the shoot and the photographs that i shot they actually liked them and then they decided to post it so it it actually helps you know like this is about the part where i say uh, of being an opportunist and then just making most of all the opportunities you can uh, you uh, like that come your way and i think yeah that's it uh, i would just like to uh, end uh this entire talk by saying uh like a quote from one of my favorite photographers Ansel Adams uh so you, what he says is that you don't make a photograph just for the camera you bring to the act of photography all the pictures you have seen the books you have read the music you have heard and the people you have loved always stay inspired be organized keep photographing and thank you for all your time Thank you so much, Ashish. Yeah, my pleasure. Really a very good speech. Uh, thank you, Ashish. Thank uh, you. Students, if you guys have any questions, any sort of concerns uh, related to automobile or probably any genre of photography, please shoot. Anyone has any questions? um if anyone is not asking then i'll ask one question uh, yeah, ashish uh, uh, you are a, you are also a youtuber and uh, you have been following photography since a young age so mm. uh, what does it take as an individual in india specifically to come out of the mainstream activities and pick a career in uh, in the art industry like photography or youtubing because mm-hmm. we all know in india till now blogging is not appreciated uh majorly mm-hmm. like the other mainstream activities so yep. what would you like to say about uh, how an individual should come out to the society or how an individual should uh, have a mindset in picking an art industry career uh sure that, that that is a really nice question because like that is what i one of the questions that i usually 
ask that like you know how do i exactly convince my parents uh, to get into photography or like how uh, do i like where do i begin exactly so my my first uh, point would be you know like arts in india especially has always uh, been looked upon as something that is done by the not so smart people or you know like arts has always been criticized that are uh, you know like if you do the uh, do anything that is related to arts how will you earn money so that is one question that is asked so everyone is always like focused about money so i would say you know like to actually uh, convince someone or you know like to show the society that you can actually do something good uh, it's always important that you make work first you know like sh- go out shoot as much as you can uh, whatever you can you know like uh, collaborate with peers or any other people and uh, you know the first thing that is most important is putting out work and not worrying actually about the money essentially because the more work you'll make you know like the more uh, uh, photographs you take the more you'll learn the more you'll get better at it and more are the chances of you actually uh, getting hired by someone for uh, doing a, pho- a photography assignment so i think uh, what is initially important is making as much work as possible uh so that actually helps you make your own portfolio and then show it to uh, your clients and then actually get work done and once you get work done people will naturally get convinced that you know uh yes i mean like he is able to make money out of it or uh, you know he is able to do like he's good as good at whatever he's doing so if if i say want to just be an engineer and i just study and then i sit at home obviously my parents would be like what is the use of doing all all this if you are not actually you know earning from it uh, but i like but in the end you know what is one important thing is like in the arts field the money that you earn isn't always everything you know because that is what the fun of art is that you are actually happy making uh, an art piece or you know like being a photographer even if you don't earn maybe you know like 100000 or 200000 dollars a year or something like that but you'll be happy doing whatever you want so i think that is most important that firstly putting out as much work as possible showing your uh, your parents or whoever you want to convince that this field is right for me so in order to show them or prove it to them that you are right for this field you know, if you put out good work they'll i think naturally get convinced and you uh, i think I, for youtubing i would say like if anyone wants to become a vlogger first thing that they need to stop thinking about is which camera should i buy because everyone i i have always seen like with photography and even with uh, youtubing and like this is the most frequent question that i have been asked that which camera should i buy if i want to get, be a good photographer or which camera should i buy to be a good you know like a youtuber or something like that and i always reply that saying use whatever you have like you know if, even with me i didn't have a dslr till i was like 18 or 19 i always like use my friend's camera practice with my phone because you know using a, something uh, like a dslr is a learning curve but then there there are so many other things in photography you know like rules of composition there's perspective there's so many things uh, there's color theory there's so many things that you can actually even practice with a mobile phone you don't necessarily need a camera for it so you know like if you want to vlog uh, start vlogging for for example just start with a phone camera uh, once you think that you can you know because uh, with say a, a career like youtubing uh, what is important is consistency and uh, you should know the art of storytelling so if you don't know or if you just like you make two or three videos and then you get bored but then you're you have already invested like 1 lakh rupees in a camera system then you'll just have the burden of making content just because you bought a camera and then you won't do it a whole heartedly so i would suggest like just use whatever equipment you have at first make work learn about it there's so much uh, out there on the internet as well and i guess mo- most of them would learn quite a lot uh, here you know like here in the school and in, the, in the, throughout the course uh oh, thank you ashish uh, mm-hmm. i have a question um, mm-hmm. it's i'm not sure if it makes sense so how mm-hmm. different is automobile fo- automobile photography or automotive photography is different in india compared to the other parts of the uh, world because uh, i not sure i mean how do you approach people uh, to give you uh, to let you shoot their automobile products or 
uh, how was it how does it happen like how does this work mm-hmm. uh so i'm not exactly sure because i have not got a lot of automotive assignments here in the us but then one thing uh, that i definitely uh, see that here you know people are usually very uh, casual with the camera and uh, you know like they actually love being photographed as compared to india you know like uh, if i if someone has a sports car or if someone is out there with his lamborghini or like some uh, uh, like a ferrari firstly those cars are a little more common here so the access is uh, a, a lot better than in india and also if you just go up and you approach someone that that hey uh, i'm a photographer and like would you be fine uh, if i just shoot your car most of them would agree uh, and then you know this is how you can build a portfolio and then uh, uh, approach say dealerships or then you can write and mail to people here they actually reply to you a little quicker and you know the, the it's it's a little more prompt uh i think with in india for me it was like uh you actually have to make good friends uh, or uh, what i've seen like in mumbai if someone is from mumbai they'll know that every sunday like before covid started obviously every sunday uh, just at, at the end of ceiling there'll be a ton of photographers standing and you they have to put so much effort uh, to actually you know get get photographs of that uh, of, of those cars that come in uh some of them who have good contacts actually you know like hang out with the the car guys and then make a good portfolio so uh to start with you know to make a good portfolio sometimes if you need to have like shoot bigger cars or something like that then uh, it's a little bit easier here than in india also. but yeah i mean you don't need a bigger car or something like that to shoot you know you can always take a basic car and uh, shoot it with proper lighting and uh, in a good location if possible and then sell it to a company yeah, i think even what, a simple you know car and a great shoot of it and a great picture of it would still do yeah yeah exactly and i think what is more important is approaching because what most of us uh, uh, are scared of while beginning is that uh, they won't like it or i'll get a no from them i mean no is the worst thing you can get but there can be better things also like they 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 may say that hey we have photographers for now uh, maybe we'll uh, keep you in mind the next time or maybe if they actually like your work they'll say that oh yes uh, uh, we can you know like give you a shoot and that that uh, applies to like any field of photography not just automotive like approach like making a good content making a nice small uh, concise presentation of of your shoot or you know like your example or your portfolio and then actually you know, approaching clients is the most important Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I have a similar question uh, to what I asked before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have many people uh, saying that uh, social media is not a good option when you want to put up your work, be it uh, in any industry, not just photography, be it any industry. And mm-hmm. uh, instead of putting it on a social media, you could contact uh, exhibitions or art galleries to put up your work because you get a much more bigger exposure there. or mm-hmm. to frame it in another way uh, as a individual who is who just stepped into the industry or a starter a, a student a young student who just stepped into the world of photography or videography and he just start putting out his work on instagram and mm-hmm. they don't get the they don't get that exposure that they want or someone else is getting much more exposure than them then how do you deal with it like how do i not put down myself that no i am not good at it or he is so much good at it how can i be better how do i deal with that okay uh, that's that's a really good and important question i would say so uh, to clear the first part of uh, your question that uh, is it better to put your work out on uh, social media like instagram or uh, like any other you know like behance or something like that so i would say this is something that i've heard from most of my teachers here at naipa who actually work with publishers and editors and have their work published that actually these days editors and publishers look on instagram for new talents and new works so uh, having the social media i would say in today's age is equally important to put out your work but uh, not at the cost of letting yourself uh, down by just uh, the amount of you know likes or comment uh, comments that you receive on your post so the like, first thing is that your instagram treat your instagram as your website that you put up your work you maintain it really well and you use the proper number of hashtags or uh, you know like grow it in an organic way because the number of followers 
isn't really important but uh, you know like the uh, type of work that you put in actually would matter like uh, if you want to you know like branch out yourself in one particular stream so say if i'm a fashion photographer and i have a field that is full of fashion photography and uh, you know i uh, put different kind of uh, work in there like you know different kind of fashion outfits or it is it has a mix of beauty and fashion you know like beauty close ups versus you know like uh, uh, high end fashion dresses something like that uh, having a profile like that uh, would actually uh, uh, get a get a editor interested in my work and then he'll probably go into say you know if i have the link of my website he'll he'll go in there or uh he has a link like if if i have a link of behind so some other site like that he'll probably go in there because in the initial stage uh, it is it, it is obviously going to be difficult to get a work out there in the art galleries because you know art galleries also uh, uh, if you because if i just walk into any new york art gallery and say that hey uh, i am a photographer and uh, even if i say that i have my work published in one or two magazines they'll be like no we choose whom we want to put in our, uh, in our galleries so you know usually putting your work out in galleries is difficult and uh, you know you can always try submitting your work but then i feel uh, you should definitely put your work on uh, social media like like instagram because instagram i, I think nowadays is one of the most uh, uh, you know like active uh, social media that a, a lot of the people in the world are using and i'm saying this because i have uh, got this information from some of my teachers as well that uh, publishers and editors do look for talents on instagram but what is most important is never get too obsessed with your comments because once again you know like i said if you want to hear a compliment uh, ask your mother similarly a lot of times it happens that a lot of your followers actually follow you because you know they love your work and then they uh, love your art and all of those things when some of the other might be friends they'll always appreciate and you know uh, so there was a movie there was a marathi movie that i watched uh, uh, a while ago and uh, it was about an actor and then uh, there's one line that is said which i always keep in my mind that uh, a clap is actually uh, you know like i, I don't know when we say for sharp in english like whatever so like it's a punishment so a clap to an artist isn't punish is, is a punishment by lord saraswati so this is something that i learned from the movie that if you get too obsessed with you know having good compliments you will be you will feel like okay i am the best i don't need to experiment so that is when uh, actually receiving critique from your peers and uh, receiving critique from you know other people uh, comes into matter but then like it's it's just fine if you don't get as much likes on instagram or if you don't grow on instagram like, that shouldn't be your final motive your uh, final motive should be actually uh putting up your work and then making your profile look good so like if and if any day say bhuvan is a, a editor and i'm i'm a photographer and uh, i just want to uh, send him uh, my work so you know if i if i approach him on instagram say if i know his instagram if i approach him on instagram say hey uh, i really like your magazine and then uh, if there's some particular thing that uh, bhuvan is doing so uh, i i would uh, like to submit a few photographs so what what bhuvan would do first is like since i've dm'd him on instagram he'll definitely check out my profile and then move on to say the website that i provide so you know it's it's like it's one thing that you should have that should look good all the time but then never be too obsessed with comments or be too affected by the number of likes you will see thank you ashish adding to mm-hmm. uh, bhuvan's point uh there's lot i mean i understand that there's lot of like criticism in the market like when in the industry in any profession that you take irrespective of art or it or anything but how do we uh, as a budding or as an amateur undergrad uh, photographers who choose their profession in automobile or any other how do how should we consider a destructive criticism or uh, to cut to make it const- active so any anything negative how do we think that okay uh, fine uh, let's not take it in a negative way and how do we take it in a positive way because it's it, it plays an important role and it at at point it actually affects the mental health and it eventually pulls that person down so how do mm-hmm. we not lose that hope of uh, uh, the criticism maybe the opposite person is trying to tell you ki uh, it's not destructive but how uh, the we 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 might take it as a destructive criticism so how do we not take it as a destructive uh, criticism 
Uh, okay, so I believe that is a little complicated one. But, uh, you know, to answer it in the best way possible, uh, I would say that the criticism that you receive or like the critique that you receive online, uh, there'll always be two kinds of people. Uh, like even for me on YouTube, uh, like just to give you a little context that the, the other day I, I, I got a critique a critique, not like a typical, you know, like hate comment or something like that. Uh, and the person said that, hey, Ashish, I really like the 360 vlogs. Uh, you're, you're improving day by day. But uh, what I feel is uh, you, you sometimes you talk a little long and you should, maybe you should shorten it. Initially, while reading it, uh, I felt that, okay, so does he not like me talking in front of the camera? Uh, am I not talking in the right way? Should I continue with my YouTube career or no? Because people are not liking me talking. But then I thought for myself that, okay, so he is a genuine person who actually, you know, wants to say uh, good things and uh, things that could be improvised about my work. So he mentioned something good. And then uh, he also mentioned something that could be improved. So I, I went back, I looked at looked back once again at, at my video. And then I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I should just cut myself here and then put something like, you know, like a B-roll and then continue with the other part of the vlog. So, you know, when you receive criticism on the internet, on, on a place like internet, uh, you'll always have two kinds of people. So one would be like, uh, that's a bad photo, that that's a rubbish photo, anyone could take it. But then there'll always be, you know, like, honestly, you just have to ignore those com comments because they are like out of hate or, you know, just because of frustration. Because like I always feel that on the internet, uh, it's always, especially after Geo, it's like if easy, very easy for everyone to just get on the internet and put on hate to everyone. But then there'll always be a certain amount of people who actually criticize you in a very correct and very right way, which is uh, useful to you. You know, like they'll say something good about your work and then they'll uh, go on saying, you know, like what can be improvised or, uh, you know, what can be actually uh, made better. And even if it is like totally bad, but it is, if it is explanatory, like, you know, if, if, if someone is actually explaining that what he didn't like, even though in a very bad tone, you know, like just uh, think like what this is what I do. Like, I do feel uh, bad about it uh, for a second, but then I, I always, you know, because like for me, everything, you know, is a learning curve, you know, like even if my say, I live uh, with two roommates and even if they are not photographers, I try to learn something from them every day. So I just try to pick up something that the person has said that I can actually improvise in uh, my photograph or I just take that thing, try out uh, if it works for me, works for my style. And then if it, if it actually, you know, like helps me, then it's, it's great. But on the internet, it's, it's always going to be, you know, like full of hate comments. You just have to learn to ignore some of them, but just, you know, like nitpick and uh, just take whatever uh, that is, that actually explains and tells you that way you can get better. Yep. So, uh, Akish, I had a question, which, uh, yep. so, you know, a lot of students, of course, in this generation, of course, as you know, this generation is attracted towards the YouTube careers and, uh, uh, you know, a small screen career, I would say, in the digital space. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it can sometimes take over the art and the, and the, and the art in you, actually, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. He is a core photographer or a filmmaker uh, for an Instagram page or for an Instagram post or for a vlog or for a YouTube uh, video. They might actually just focus on that. Um, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you advise these students or this generation to actually, you know, uh, prepare or structure their, their, their uh, career or just before they actually look at the YouTube or Instagram as a career? or as a place mm -hmm. to they work, how do they prepare themselves? Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I just missed your last sentence. Which is the right way to do it? Okay. okay. So uh, I would say that, you know, like uh, if, I say, if I talk about photography and then I talk about YouTube, both of them are like completely different careers. Uh, YouTubing is something that uh, you would actually need to decide what kind of YouTube that you need to do and then focus on it. Or photography then would be something that you decide that you want to do and then you focus on it. Uh, mixing mixing up both of them would be really very difficult because later on, uh, moving ahead, uh, if I have to uh, pursue my career only as a photographer, then uh, I'll have to uh, de dedicate 
so much amount of my time to photography then i would lose out on youtube maybe or if i just decide to go ahead with youtube and youtube itself then i'll probably miss out a lot on uh, photography so you know like if i say if i if i take up youtube and then if i uh, take up something like blogging or uh, uh, like making skits or something then i will have to think about uh, my content and my you know make my content creation and uh, uh you know my the script of my script or something like that and then focus on uh, focus on that so i would just like say that initially it's fine to just you know try out different aspects but then uh, at one point you should actually finalize that what you actually want to uh, go ahead with uh, so is it like either photography or youtube yeah okay i have another added uh, uh, thing to it which is uh... you know it is always a there is always a debate between commercial and and what you like to do so let's say if i'm a filmmaker or a photographer and if i'm making uh, if i'm taking some photographs uh yeah mm-hmm. or if i'm uh, if i'm interested in one uh you know style of shooting or making make creatively but that may not be very commercial uh yeah. that may be very let's say that may not be liked by everybody or the mass mm-hmm. and Yeah, actually mm-hmm. on my youtube or my instagram um like yesterday one of the uh, guests uh, spoke about you know how we should stay away a little bit from instagram sometimes when at least when you're learning <laughs> and uh, okay. so uh, you know so my 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 point and question actually comes from there because okay uh, how do you what is what should be your mindset like i should you be looking at commercial right away or uh, how do you do it you know i mean uh, what is your take on it uh so to start with uh, i would say that in the, in the initial stage uh you know like in the first year and like till the second year especially in school so you can actually like experiment uh in the various fields of like you know various genres of photography like may it be commercial or, fi- or you know like just fine art or uh, maybe like some may like to do documentary or something like that so you know like they can actually you should experiment different genres of photography uh, you know like uh, if you want to put it up on instagram or no it's obviously your choice but then if, even if you do uh, it's not going to hurt you because uh, i mean there's no, there's nothing wrong in just putting out your work out there uh, so you know if you actually experiment so that the, that's what happened with me that even uh, when i came here uh, at naipa i i still once again experimented with like i did a few fashion shoots i did a few you know like beauty shoots then we did a few uh, commercial uh, shoots you know like a food photography or just still life photography but then what i was always pulled at was travel uh, photography and then shooting cars so like in the end i decided that this is the field that i want to do so you know like i focused on uh, shooting landscapes and then you know like maybe writing to some magazines that okay like uh, i would like to uh, submit a, uh, some some photographs and then you know, like get some assignments for, from them so i think uh, initially it is a, a little bit difficult to actually just choose whatever you want to do and it is it won't be right if you just choose one part, part of photography without experiencing how the other one feels because what if you know later on uh, going ahead you actually realize that okay i should have tried this earlier because this is something that i actually enjoy doing more Uh, for me if i would just focused on fashion photography because i had a experience of working with a few of my friends uh, and then you know like they they got a certain number of likes on their posts uh, for the photo that i shot if i would have just uh, you know like gone towards that side maybe i would have never made it to the other side of photography that i actually enjoy doing so i would say that just like explore various forms and then you know like there will, there will come a point that you will actually realize that okay this is something that i enjoy doing and if you pursue that genre like you know there are a lot of photographers in india uh, that i know who actually do fine art but then they still still make a living out of it so even though it is like really really very difficult but then because that is one thing that they pursue uh, like with all their passion and you know like uh, they put everything in, in, into it and not just art you know it also means like maybe writing to art galleries or selling their uh, work uh, selling their art pieces to the right people making you know like contacts i i always think that photography is not just going out and shooting with a uh, camera it also involves how you market yourself as a photographer so uh, 
yeah that's it so like this experiment and then there will come a point when you realize that the, the, this this one part, one stream of photography that I actually en- enjoy doing and then make it into your you know like uh, mode of earning some something like that so. is there any career in street photography and how to promote that photos uh your voice that uh yeah, anik is asking uh, is there any career in street photography and if there is street then how do we uh, promote his uh, pictures or his images uh see i i have actually you know uh, been following a lot of street photographers uh who actually uh have made a career out of it so honestly if you just start doing it then you'll you, you won't start getting you know like assignments right out of the day because street, street photography is you know more comes in the documentary part a lot of times so you just have to keep on making work uh submitted to uh, various kind of competitions or magazines get published or you know like uh, you, you can do that also going ahead if you actually uh have uh, built a lot of your work you know like if you have a very good portfolio maybe uh, you can get uh, uh assignments from actually uh, various companies who actually need certain amount of like certain kind of street photographs or uh, maybe you know there's there's a certain camera that is actually launching uh, the new model and then they want to show uh, a few street photographs uh, in the brochure or something like that then they'll approach you so i think uh, with street photography to just begin with it is uh, a little difficult to actually you know like make money out of it but then if you keep on shooting uh, and you know like growing and putting your work out so i think uh, eventually you can turn it into a career yeah uh, have you ever ventured into making a zine of zine or a photo book of yourself like by yourself Yeah, yeah so like actually while i was uh, here at nifa we had a module when we actually had to uh, you know like make make a photo book so uh, last year uh, in in 2019 in january 2019 i had actually uh, visited the lag because you know like i am always so interested in uh, travel photography and i wanted to do something that a lot not that not a lot of people actually witnessed like you know when you hear the word ladakh 50% of the people have either visited it or like they know know about it they have seen videos or they have ridden their bikes to that place but then what not what a, not a lot of people know is how that place actually looks in winters because you know like if you go to pangong lake it's completely frozen even in lake city there's snow everywhere some of the places you cannot actually visit uh, uh, and uh, i actually wanted to document all of that so i so i went to ladakh in winters uh, photographed in like you know minus 20 degrees sometimes in minus 33 at night just to see uh, like how the stars look or something like that uh, like you know because i i was all, i always love to do astrophotography so i had a lot of images and uh, when we had a book module here at uh, uh, naifa so in that book module we actually compiled those images uh, we gave write ups and uh, we you know like combined them together and we were almost going to send it to printing but then covid happened and then we had to just you know write up and yeah i actually prepared like a pdf that was going to be sent for and that is a really nice experience and you know like ap- apart from book book printing it is a great experience to actually uh, see your work printed because uh, uh, that is one thing uh, I-, i have not seen a lot of people do in india that we don't usually print our photos enough because uh, it is a completely different feeling to see our photos printed and then see how the entire thing like whatever you have shot it is a really nice feeling to see how it looks in print Thank you so much Ashish for giving us insights of well, how uh, YouTube or uh, uh, actually works and the difference between the photographer and a YouTuber having a balance between it because they're like different genres all together and hardly there's any connection between it and a lot of other uh, useful information and answering our questions thank you f- so much for joining the session